Suddenly, the barn door opened from the other side. Both Celia and John didn't know who opened the door. They heard nothing. They saw nothing. Just sunlight blaring in, revealing every moving figure in the barn. Surely, if someone would have walked up at that moment, both John and Celia would have been open for the kill. A few close seconds passed. Suddenly, John thrust his upper torso outward and screamed to Celia, Now, Celia! Now, Celia! We gotta go now! He got up with Celia in hand and both ran to the other side of the barn. At a glimpse, Celia saw a group of men talking. As they were running, Celia whispered to John, John, baby, I think I saw two men talking. I think they saw me too. Quickly, they ran to the other side of the barn and stood flat against the tall sheep. They hid behind it, gasping for the ground. Their lives were on a tightrope, and they knew it. Celia was not in control now. She was clueless, not knowing her whereabouts or the consequences she would have to pay if caught in Johnston County. She looked left. She looked right. And just as quickly as she looked to her right, she saw a glimpse of someone headed for her. John pulled her again, further away from the danger. Running, running, it seemed as if it was Celia's destiny to run away for her dear life. Soon they hit the old oak tree. They both moved around to the other side of the tree, eyeing any possible spectators or the men. They were undetected. The next task was to run over to the other oak tree. This posed more of a challenge, for it was open field. John even remembered when his best friend Mac was caught in this same field and was eaten alive by the dogs. But fear didn't pose a threat this time. John became an unstoppable force, moving in precision, strength, and valor. They squatted and ran as they headed straight to the second oak tree and then to the field. John was such a great leader that Celia caught on quite well on the task at hand. There was no time for stopping. Both had to fight the mangling weed. 